Namaste. Welcome to class. We're going to begin today with some uh, breathing through our nose down into our tummies. Place your hands onto your belly, fingertips touching, breathing down deep, filling up that tummy balloon and breathing out. Let the air come out, the tummy goes flat and the fingertips fingertips touch again. So let's do that for four big lovely breaths. Breathing into your tummy and out. Breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. One more time, breathing in and out. Let's do our mini meditation. Fingers rubbing, sitting up tall, remembering the thumb touches each finger and says the yoga words, peace begins with me. And we do that three times, don't we? In our normal voice, three times in a whisper and three times totally silent. Just keep tapping and saying the words inside. Let's do it. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Whisper. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Begins with me. Silent. Very good. Hopefully you're feeling cool, calm and collected and ready to do a bit of yoga. We're just going to warm up with a couple of stretches first of all and then we're going to move in to uh, our yoga class for today and then we're sticking with travelling and um, today we are visiting Australia. But let's warm up. Let's put our hands together, slide the fingers in to interlock Push the hands away from you and then stretch them all the way up. Try not to have your shoulders up by your ears, so drop those down. But try and keep the arms straight and the palms of your hands should be facing the ceiling. Take a big breath in and out with a big breath in. Bring those hands down. Place fingers on the mat, stretch up and bend over on one side, making sure your bottom stays on the ground. Feeling that stretch in these muscles down the side of your body. And the other direction, breathing in, up, 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 and over as you breathe out. Oh, that feels good. And coming back to the centre. Let's do our pretzel twist. Hand on your knee, fingers lightly touching behind you. And just gently pull yourself around. Take a big breath in. And when you breathe out, try and see if you can go a little bit further. And you're twisting all of your stomach and giving your spine a lovely stretch. Coming back to the centre and going to the other side. Fingers on the knees. Use this arm to slightly pull you around. Remember to sit up straight. Big breath in. Can you go a bit deeper? And slowly unravel. Let's pop our feet together. And if your feet are nice and close, uh, you should feel a stretch here. If you don't like them close, you can go a bit further away. But I want you to get as close as feels comfortable. And then if you're nice and close, wrap your hands around your toes. And if you're a bit further out, just put your hands on your ankles. 
and we're going to push our chest up to the sky. You should feel that increase the stretch in your legs. So we call this one butterfly and you can flutter those wings slightly up and down, gentle bounce. In grown-up yoga it's called cobbler's pose and the reason for that is in the markets in India they would put a shoe here to be fixed in between the feet and hold it and they would fix the sole of the shoe and that's where it got its neck from. So just a couple of bounces, stretching out all of the muscles around here and slowly and bring your knees together and we're ready to visit Australia. Australia is in the southern hemisphere and the continent of Oceania which is the smallest of the seven continents of the world. Fact time! There are about 25 million people living in Australia. Capital city? Do you know it? Hmm, I can hear some people saying something, but it's not right. Oh, yes, I heard it then. Canberra. That is the capital city of Australia. What about the money? Well, it's all about the dollar, the Australian dollar. Now, people think of Australia as being lovely and hot and sunny. So I think we should do some sun salutations so that we can uh, get our body ready for action. Let's stand up. Wobble, wobble. And I'm going to turn to the side and you can carry on looking at me. Feet near to each other, close or together, whatever feels right for you. Stretch those arms up. Hello, sun. Bend all the way down. Hello, earth. Fingers to the ground. Step one leg back into your runner's lunge, or sometimes it, we call it road runner. So we go beep beep. Hands flat. Downward dog. Now this is our first downward dog today, so let's push our feet down to the ground like we're walking the dog. Stretching out all of those muscles in our legs, our back. And our muscles in our arms are getting worked out as well. Now push both heels down. Feel that stretch. Come forwards to your plank. And lower down to the ground. Ooh. Untuck your toes. Let's come up for a snake. Ready? Wiggle those shoulders. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Toes under, downward dog. Heels to the ground. Bend your knees. Jump forwards, please. Boing. And just hang out here for a minute in your rag doll. Rag doll. And slowly, you can do a little bend in your knee. Bring up those arms, back up to the sun. Hands come together in Namaste. Are you ready to go on the other side? What leg did you put back last time? I did this one. So I need to make sure I do this one. This time when we do our road runner. Get ready. Stretch up, look up to the sun. Hello sun. All the way down. Oh, and just hang here for a second with our hello earth. Fingers to the ground, bend those knees and step one leg back. Row on a beep beep. Hands flat, downward dog. This time, bend your knees down and push your bum back. Bend those knees down and push your bum back. One more time. Down and back. Let's lift up one leg for a three-legged dog. Woof, 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 woof. Arms 
side. Woof, woof, woof. Toes down, back to downward dog. Plank pose. And lower to the ground. Untucking those toes. Cobra snake. Toes under, downward dog, bend those knees and boing, up to the front of the mat, hang out for a second, maybe put one hand on one elbow, one hand on the other one and have a little swing from side to side. This, we sometimes call this one the gorilla. And bend those knees and come up. Hands come to the center. I think we are ready to find out some bits about Australia. So I said Canberra was the capital city of, um, but some people might have called out Sydney because Sydney is a much more famous city in Australia than Canberra, even though it is not the capital. And when we think of Sydney, we think of two famous landmarks, the first being the Sydney Opera House. As you can see from our picture, it's very sort of triangular. So we're going to come into triangle. One foot in front, nice and straight. The other foot slightly wonky at the back. And remember, we're trying to draw a line from the heel all the way down. Now, our legs are not as wide as when we do our warriors. So uh, it's a little bit smaller. And this leg is gonna stay straight. You're gonna stand up tall and stretch your arms out. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to tip forwards, not changing the legs, and then we're going to bend all the way down. And your hand is just going to rest by the leg. You don't need to hold on, it's just hanging there, but we're going to make it straight so that our arms are working as well. We want this hip to stay back here, like we're between two panes of glass. Okay, so this is our basic triangle. Very good. Coming up, we're going to swap sides. That foot turns in, and that one goes that way. Remember to stand up tall, stretch those arms out, hitch forwards, and bend down. Really pull those arms in either direction to keep open across the chest area. Big breath in. Can you feel it working in your legs? Good job. Coming up. Now, let's go back to the other side. We're going to change it slightly. So, straight, wonky, standing up tall. This time we're going to bend our knee. So you might need to go a bit wider because we do not want this knee to go over the foot. We want to have a nice straight line from the ankle up to the knee. Okay, we're turning it into a side angle bend. So we're going to put our elbow on our knee, but we're trying to keep straight. So you're going to bend down, rest your elbow on your knee. This arm's just hanging out the side at the moment. And then we're going to bring it up, 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 close to your ear, and then stretch it up, first of all, right to the sky, fingers all stretched, and then bend it towards your ear. And we are looking very sleek, like the roof of the Opera House. Now the Opera House was built in 1973. It's not quite as old as me, but not far off. Coming up 
to the center. And we gotta do it on the other side. Whatever you do on one side, you gotta do on the other. Stretch those arms out. Uh, oh, actually, we didn't do that, did we? We bent the knee. And then we tipped down, put our knee on the elbow. Might go a little bit wider. And then trying to make this lovely straight line here. We started with our arm to the side. We brought our hand up to our ear. And then we went up to the sky, fingers stretched. And then we took it over to create that straight line. Because imagine if I put a ball on my hand and it rolled all the way down my body, down to the foot. We want a, like a lovely straight line. Big breath in. And coming up. Right. The other landmark I said, the Sydney Harbour Bridge. We're going to come down onto our back. Laying on the mat. Okay, make sure all of your back is on the mat, flat. So what you can do with this bit, your hips, slightly tip them up. That pushes your back in, can you feel that? Tip, your whole back is touching the ground. Let it go normal. Tip it up, and normal, tip it up, and normal. Now tip it up and keep it there. Try to make sure your feet are not too far away. We want to have, again, a nice steady base with the foot and the heels close to each other, or in a sort of straight line. So you want to be able to more or less just be able to touch your heels. Okay. But your arms are going to stay at the side. Your head and your shoulders are going to stay on the mat. And you're going to lift up the tummy. You're raising your bridge. And your knees are slightly open. Just in line with the hips. The hips. These bits. So you're nice and straight. Okay. Let's go for it. Ready? There you go. Now. I was very lucky many, many, many years ago to visit at Sydney and I got to climb up the Sydney Harbour Bridge, right to the top. It was very good fun, but a bit scary because it was so high and it was actually quite a windy day. Really push up that tummy. Now, if you want, you could put your hands underneath you and hold them together interlace like you did at the beginning and come right up onto your shoulders. How does that feel? Does it feel like you're stretching everything? Make sure you're squeezing your bottom cheeks together. Take a big breath in and out. We sometimes call this a whale as well because it's, uh, I don't really know why, other than you can do a whale Blow hole noise, so you breathe in and go with your breath. There you go. Right, we need to come out of this, so I'm gonna let go of my arms and then I'm gonna slowly, slowly lower down each bit of my bone in my back bit by bit because they're like little cubes stacked on top of each other. So I'm gonna go down, down, down. Rolling, 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 all the way to the bottom. Now, what have we got next? Ah, Australia. When we think Australia, quite often we think of beaches. So of course, surfers, they have a massive surfer lifestyle out there. So we've got to do our surfer pose for Australia. So like we had a second ago, straight foot, wonky foot, uh, but remembering we're doing warriors, we want nice wide legs so you can stretch it out a bit more. Ooh, wobble, wobble. Suck everything in, bend the knee down, stretch those arms out, and you're looking towards your fingernails on this hand. Right down the arm. And this arm and this arm want to be level, so we don't want this or this, we want this. And you'd be surfing, so you might have a bit of da 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 
And we are so cool at surfing, we can even do it backwards. Get ready to jump around. Zoom those arms out, looking down those fingernails. Making sure this foot that's out, you are pushing the back of the foot here, this bit, into the floor. That means you're getting everything stretched properly. Okay, but watch out. If you happen to be surfing, did you know that Australia is home to around 5,500 great white sharks? Let's do shark pose. Now, although the great white shark is not the biggest, it is certainly impressive. Onto your tummy. Reach those arms behind you. Do your interlock. And then you're going to lift up your shark fin and bring the top of your body up. So you're stretching across the chest. So when you're relaxed, you just let your hands go on the back and drop the elbows down. Take a big breath in. And as you breathe out, pull up. And then take a couple of breaths in. Now, did you know, once a shark is fully fed, it will not need to eat for about three months. It can live without any food for three whole months. That's crazy. I can live three hours without something to eat. Take a big breath in and lower down. Now, if we're talking sea, then we've got to talk the Great Barrier Reef. This is a beautiful spot in Australia. The Great Barrier Reef is made up of around uh, more than 3,000 little reefs, coral reefs, and around those coral reefs, which are home to around um, 350 different species of coral, are around 1,500 different species of fish. So we're coming into our fish pose. So we're going to lay down. You can start with your knees bent if it's easier because you're going to lift up your bottom and place your hands underneath. That way you're going to keep your hands close into your body. You can then stretch your legs out and then you're going to lift up your chest, coming onto your lower part of your arm, called the forearm, and your head comes to the mat. Now, if you don't like this, that's totally fine, you don't have to do it, it's, to it's up to you. Just go with what you think is comfy. Um, as you can see, my back is not on the floor, just my bottom and the top of my head. So, I'm going to just tuck my t-shirt in a bit and hopefully you can see the gap. That looks good. Good look, good look. Right, okay. Here we go. So, hands on the bottom, pushing up the chest, head on the ground, and hopefully you can see that I've got a gap under my back. Now this is actually a relaxing pose. So some people really enjoy just staying here. If you don't, that's fine, come down. And I'm just gonna take a couple of breaths in. Some people like to lift up the leg, but it makes it very hard. So I'm gonna keep them down. Now, making sure when I come out of it, I'm not gonna hurt my neck, so I'll just gently lower down, untuck my fingers, and I'm good to go. In the centre of Australia sits Illaru. Illaru is the largest single rock in the whole wide world. So we're going to make ourselves sort of like a large rock in our cat pose. Coming up onto our hands and our knees. So knees under hips, hands under shoulders. Can you twist? this bit of your arm forwards. Can you see what I'm doing there? Forwards. 
See how that feels, twisting them forwards. Fingers are pointing straight. Push your bum out to do the cow first of all and look up. And then we're going to create the big rock by tucking our head under and pushing up to the ceiling as you breathe out. And then breathe in, coming back to the cow. To do that a couple of times, breathing in and out as you go at your own pace. So Inamu um, was called a, is thought to be a sacred place. Um, according to the uh, indigenous people of Australia, the Aboriginal people of Australia, and uh, who sort of think of it as a, well, they just, as I say, think of it as a very special place. Now, those Aboriginal people of Australia were thought to have come from Africa, and they travelled over to Australia 60,000 years ago. What a journey that would have been. Now, when we think of Australia, we think of the animals. There are some wonderful animals only to be found in Australia, some of them. So let's have a look. Of course, we couldn't talk about Australia without the kangaroo. So we're going to come into a chair pose. So bending your knees and pushing your bottom out. And you've got your little kangaroo hands here. So a kangaroo is a marsupial. And this means that they carry their babies in their pouch. We're going to do a kangaroo jump. So bend down and jump using the spring from your feet. Let's do that four times, ready? Boing, 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 boing. Now, there are over 50 million kangaroos. So if you think how many people I said there were in Australia, 25 million, there are a lot more kangaroos than people. And they are 55 different species of kangaroos. I wouldn't have known that. Coming up, one other famous animal that we think of when we think of Australia is the koala. Now it's called koala bear, but it is not anything to do with a bear. And to do, uh, represent the koala, we're going to do eagle pose because a koala does love to hug the trees. So we're going to wrap ourselves up, standing foot on the ground, other foot wraps around, arms out, crisscross, the one underneath goes up, you can touch the backs of the fingers, or if your arms are long, you might get fingers to touch your hands. That's all to do with the length of your arms, and nothing more. You push those up, and you should get a shoulder stretch. And then we're going to bend down. Now, if you feel balanced today, you could try taking your toe off. If you've got a very long leg, you might wrap your foot around. Otherwise, just let it hang, and if you need to, keep the toe on the ground. Take a big breath in, and out. So a koala is also a marsupial, and their babies are also called joeys, the same as a kangaroo. Swapping around, other side. Making sure the other arm gets to have a good stretch this time by going on the top, pushing those shoulders up, or the arms up to get the shoulders, bending down. Koalas love eucalyptus leaves, and they eat tons of them. And they can sleep up to 20 hours a day. The lazy things. Unravel and come up. Let's do our dingo. A dingo is a wild dog, so of course, we're in our downward dog. Push those heels down to the mat. Now, a dingo likes to roam around in packs a pack of about 10 other dingoes. And a dingo does not bark, it howls. So let's come through to our upward dog and have a little howl. Oh! Downward dog and upward dog. Oh! One more, downward dog and upward dog. Very good. Coming onto your knees and lowering down onto the tummy. So we're going to see 
uh, how we can make ourselves a bit like a platypus. A platypus is a monotreme. That means a mammal that lays eggs. They're a bit like an otter, I suppose, in the fact that they live in the rivers, uh, in the banks of the rivers, in burrows, and they love a swim. So we're going to do our locust pose, also sometimes called Superman pose. So our head is going to come off the ground, our chest is going to come off the ground, and our arms are, and our feet are, all at the same time. So let's take a big breath in, and when we breathe out, let's lift everything off the ground, keeping our tummies on the ground though. Get ready. Lifting up. Take a breath in up here. And lower down. So we've done one little one. Let's see if we can do a bigger one. Let's breathe in. And lift up. Can we hold this a bit longer? Oh, it's hard work on the tummy. And down. We've got one more. Let's try and see if we can go for a swim. Let's lift up. And swim those feet. Kicking your feet. Keep them long and straight. Kicking your arms up and down. Swimming, swimming, swimming. Keep going, keep going, keep going. You're nearly there. Ah, oh, that was tough. Okay, what have we got next? We've got the echidna, which is also another monotreme. They're very similar to our hedgehogs. They're very spiky little creatures and they curl up into a ball when they want to protect themselves. So coming onto your knees, you're going to curl up in a child's pose. You can either have your knees together or have a bit of a gap, but your toes must stay together. Place your head on the ground, arms come to the side of you, backs of the hands on the ground and the palms up to the ceiling. And just breathe. So this is a resting pose. Anytime you get a bit worn out in our yoga class, you can do this. And then you join back in when you're back to uh, full breath. This is also a really good pose if you are just feeling a bit like you want a bit some time on your own. You're all tucked up, can't see anyone. And you can just chill. But we're going to have to slowly come up. Ready to see what other animals there are. Well, they're the birds, of course. Uh, over half the birds in Australia live there permanently, can only be found in Australia. Um, we have the kookaburra. And for our birds, we're going to do the warrior pose. So the kookaburra and the rainbow lorikeet are two birds that live in Australia all the time. Standing on this leg, raising up your back leg, wings to the side of you, trying to stay uh, even here, we don't want to tip, so you're trying to keep this nice and flat. Point the toes to the ground, push the heel away, arms to the side. If you prefer to have them out, you can do that, or you can have them in front if you prefer that way. Whatever works for you. So the kookaburra is a, a well-known Australian bird because they say it laughs, it's got a funny, cool, Let's bring that down and swap sides. So yeah, there's a bit of a song, I think. Kookaburra laugh, kookaburra sing. I can't, I don't know it very well. So uh, I'm a bit wobbly on this foot, trying to work at pushing that hip down to keep even. So this is my bad foot, so it's wobbly, 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 wobbly. And lower down. Now, another species of bird is the emu. This also can only be found over there in Oz. And uh, the emu is the tallest bird in Australia and it can run up to 31 miles an hour. We're going to do a pose that we haven't done very often or we don't do very often in class. It's called a standing half lotus. So I'm going to show you face on. You've got your standing foot all strong on the ground. And you're going to lift up the other foot, place the foot against the leg, 
and aim to get the knee down. The sole of the foot is facing you. So uh, we don't do this one very often. Oh, hair in my mouth. Uh, some people, wobble, 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 can wrap their arm around, and if they've got long arms, they can manage to touch their toes, hold their toe, but I can't do that. So we're just gonna stay here, Whoa. talking and trying to focus. It doesn't always work. So we should look at something that's still to help us balance. Now you can take this a bit further if you'd like. If you wanna give it a try, I'm gonna turn around so, so you can see what I'm gonna do. So I'll come back into it. Right, I'm gonna see if I can bend down. So we're going to tip forwards, being very careful. Do you get your fingers on the ground? You can stay here, see how you feel. Uh, or you can walk your hands forwards and come down onto your knees, and tuck that toe at the back, and you're here. Now, this is not that tricky to get down. The trickiest part is to try and get back up again. So let's put our fingers down, tuck the toe under, push up, walk back, so you're here, and then you can have a go first if you want to stand on the leg and put your hands together at the heart, and then slowly come up. Woohoo! Now, this is one side. Gotta do it on the other one. So, my mat's wonky, and you know I don't like a wonky mat. So, let's do it on the other side. I had that one on yeah, it was this side, right? So, okay. So I'm just gonna hold it here for a minute, give the leg time to um, get used to feeling being in this position. Okay, let's bend forwards. Oh, the wobbly foot isn't liking this one. Wobbly, 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 wobbly. <laughs> Toes to the ground and have a hang for a second. Okay, walking down. Take a minute. Hands. Toe under, push back up. Okay, let's see if I can get my hands here. Ooh. <laughs> I said this one was going to be harder. And boom, wobble, coming up. Oh, that was tough. Give those legs a shake. Okay, now there are quite a few scary animals in Australia as well as sharks. Here are some of the less cuddly ones. Of course, snake coming onto your tummy. Australia has some of the world's most poisonous snakes. Ooh. Hands by your shoulders, elbows tuck into the body, slowly lifting up. Hands, um, all spread out, fingers spread. Bend in the elbow, shoulders away from ears, cobra snake. So Australia has about 140 different species of snakes. Mm, not my favorite creatures, I'm afraid. Slowly lower down. Then we are coming into spider. The funnel web spider. Hmm, well he injects deadly poison. Luckily, they have a vaccine, an anti-venom vaccine that they invented and no one has died from a spider bite in over 30 years, so that's pretty good. Legs are wide, toes pointing out, bending down, and then walk your spidery fingers out and around the outside of your feet. I can't really look very much at the camera because it's making me look down. And this is spider pose. You should feel that stretch in those legs. Ah, slowly come up and unravel. It's quite a tough pose, that one. 
It's not one of my favourites, but you can have another go if you think you can do it. Otherwise, we're going to try crocodile laying on your side. Oh, I can manage this one. I'm going to have my toes together, well feet together, toes pointing towards me, legs stacked one on top of the other. Stretch this arm out on the ground, so I'm trying to create a lovely long straight line. Hands together, reach my arm up and snap it down for the crocodile snap. Now there are saltwater crocodiles and uh, freshwater crocodiles in Australia. The salties are the, the world's largest reptile and can grow up to 20 feet long. My goodness. Let's try lifting those feet up as you snap. Snap, snap, snap. Can you wiggle your tail a bit? Try not to tip over. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Swapping sides. Did you know a crocodile can hold their breath underwater? For an hour. Nice straight feet, toes pointing towards you. Snap your crocodile jaws. Snap, 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 snap. Lift up your feet and try it snapping, holding those feet up. Oh, wobbly, wobbly. Oh, and then wiggle your tail. Whoa, this is my wobbly side, obviously. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And lastly, the box jellyfish is the most venomous marine animal. That means it lives in the sea. And its tentacles can be 10 feet long. Now, there isn't really a yoga pose for jellyfish, but I thought it might be quite fun to lay on our backs, stretch your arms and legs in the air, and have a wobble. These are your tentacles. And they're wobbling. And they're floating around. And you have completed your Australia yoga. Now, I don't want you to be put off of visiting Australia with all those dangerous animals that we just talked about. Because people die, less people die every year from a snake bite or a shark bite uh, in Australia than they do from a bee sting. I've been twice before and I haven't seen any sharks or snakes or spiders. The worst thing I ever got bitten by was an ant on the bottom. We're going to uh, have a song now. Because we, oh, because Australia is a very large island surrounded by sea, I think we should take a ride on our boat. A yogi went to sea. If you want to be a yogi like me, practice wherever you are, on land or even at sea. A yogi went to see, 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 to see what she could see, see, see. But all that she could see, 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 was the bow of her big white boat. Hi, matey. Breathe in that briny sea air. Pranayama, so good for your lungs. A yogi went to see, 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 to see what she could see, see, see. But all that she could see, see, see was the dolphin. What kind of dolphin? Pranayama, it keeps you healthy all the year long. A yogi went to see, 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 to see what she could see, see, see. But all that she could see, see, see was a heron. What kind of heron? Breathe 
in that drawing, Sierra. Pranayama will keep you focused for your schoolwork. A yogi went to see, 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 to see what she could see, see, see. But all that she could see, see, see was a fish. What kind of fish? Take your imagination to a beautiful beach.
The sky is a wonderful bright, bright blue. Just a tiny whisper of soft white cloud in the sky. The sun is big yellow gleaming ball in the sky and you feel the warmth from the sun on your whole body. Along the edge of the beach are palm trees gently swaying in a gentle cooling breeze. As you breathe in, imagine the smell of the sea filling your body and breathing out, releasing all of that sea air. You are laying on the sand. your body heavy against the sand. Your fingers touch the sand. The top of the sand is warm. But as your finger swirls around in the sand, the warm sand moves away and underneath the sand is slightly cool and damp. What picture would you draw in the sand? Imagine yourself swirling your finger in the sand, creating a picture, anything you like. Hearing the waves against the shore, you decide to stand up slowly and steady, just in your imagination, and imagine yourself walking towards the edge of the sea. The sand warm under your feet, the weight of your body creating footprints in the sand. And as you get to the edge of the water, the waves move away and just the wet sand is left. And the wave then comes towards your toes and the cool water tickles. It feels refreshing. It feels lovely. In the soft sand, there are a few shiny pebbles. You decide to pick up a pebble, holding it into your hand, feeling cool and damp. As you're holding the pebble there in your hand, your fingers wrapped around it. Any worry or trouble that you seem to have, imagine sending that worry from your head down to your neck, along your shoulder, down your arm, into your hand, and as you squeeze the stone, the pebble, in your hand, imagine yourself squeezing that worry into the little pebble. And then imagine yourself raising your arm 
and throwing the pebble out into the sea. You see it break through the surface of the water and you know it's sinking down, down to the bottom of the ocean and it's taken away that worry or troubling thought, leaving you feeling peaceful and calm, peaceful and calm. If you need to do this with other pebbles, feel free. Otherwise, imagine yourself walking back to your place in the sand. Lowering your body back down to the ground. Stretching yourself out on the sand. Your body heavy against the ground. Imagine yourself slightly sinking into the sand. And slowly wiggle your fingers and toes. Stretch your arms up over your head. And have a big morning time stretch. Hug your knees up to your tummy and squeeze them in and gently rock from side to side. Slowly coming onto one side, push yourself gently up. Crisscross those legs. Opening your eyes if you haven't already. I hope you enjoyed our trip to Australia today. I think we've travelled enough. So we'll have a whole new type of class next week. And I hope to see you there. Place your hands together. Hands for our head to think good things. Hands for our mouth to say good things and hands for our heart to do good things. Namaste. Bye.